Hello everyone, this is going to be the demonstration for the special senses, specifically vision and specifically looking at the eye. So, first of all, here's a cow eye. This is not a human eye, just to be clear. So, not exactly how it's going to look like for a human, but this is going to be a mammalian eye still, like, nonetheless. So this is a cow eye, and first of all, if you look closely, you can see that, like, it's not just the eye itself. There's a lot of this external tissue as well. This is called extraocular fat. So when you consider the eye, like when you're looking at someone's eye, you don't think about like it being surrounded by all this fat like in the orbital socket, but it is going to be surrounded by quite a lot of tissue to help with supporting it and cushioning it, cushioning it in place while in like the skull. So this is extraocular fat, but as you know, the eye is typically a roundish shape. So let's get started and taking this off so we can see a little bit more of the outside of the eye. So the one thing that you really want to be careful of is just making sure that your hand is nowhere near like the other end of the scalpel, but also just trying to make sure that you don't cut or, like into the eye too much so that we can see kind of the external structures before we take a look at the inside. So this will just take just a minute or so. So please bear with me. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of tissue out here. Like there's a lot of this extra ocular fat that is going to be surrounding it. But also, these tissues, like these that are kind of darker in color and maybe a little bit fibrous, those are actually muscles, as in muscles that are going to be helping with moving the eyes. So you have both fat as well as muscles attached to the outside of the eye. And as we look in here, we can see that we can kind of see the shape of the eye. We can see that the shape of the eye is relatively round. But also, the color of the shape of the eye, or sorry, the color of the outside of the eye is relatively white. So, I'm trying to be careful not to cut too deep into the eye. But there's also another structure that we want to see in the back of the eye. So while I'm doing this, try to consider what we might see in the back of the eye. Maybe extending away from the eye as it moves a little bit. Well, as the as the structure moves away from the eye towards like the central nervous system. So as I'm taking all this off, you can see how much there is actually surrounding the eye. Like we know what the eye shape kind of is already. Like you probably have seen like at least some illustrations of an eye. But the eye has a lot of stuff around it. Muscles, fats, and so on. There we go. So there was a lot of stuff out there, but we're starting to finally get to the actual eye itself. So look at all this stuff out here. This is all just surrounding and supporting the eye. But here, you can start to see kind of like the structures that are actually around the eye, these muscles that are attached to it. But if we cut even these off, So you can start to see the actual tissue on the outside of the eye. Although not completely white here, like this would be the outer fibrous tissue of like the eye. This would be the sclera. This is the protective layer. This is going to be all throughout the majority of the eye, like all around it, except for the very front. So here, this would be called the cornea. And although not clear here because of, well, preservation and potentially like the life of the animal, 
This is relatively cloudy right now, but this is typically clear. When you look at someone's front of the eye, you usually see a clear structure because that's important to allow light to enter the eye. So you can see a clear structure, but the rest of it, that would be the sclera. Now on the back of the eye, there's actually one more structure that you can look for. That structure that I was talking about earlier that extends away from the eye. You can see part of it at the very least. Like you won't see the whole thing, but at the very least you'll see the part that's ex that's connected to the eye. And unfortunately I just cut a little bit off, but this right here, the thing that I cut off, and then this right here, this little stalk, this is the optic nerve. And this is going to extend posteriorly towards the brain to then go to the occipital lobe in order for you to interpret all of those visual stimuli from the photoreceptors. So from the outside of the eye, you had external or extraocular fat. You had extraocular muscles. You have the sclera, the very outside, and then you have the cornea, the very outside on the anterior or front side. Now what we're going to do is cut across the front of the eye so you can see like all of the internal structures, but we don't want to cut like across like here so that you can see all of these structures in the front of the eye as well. But something to keep in mind is that there are fluids inside of this eye. So we're going to be very careful as we do this, but there are two fluids. There are two fluids, one that's more jelly-like, one that's more watery. Like consider where each of those are. So we should be looking at the back of the eye right now. So these are more, or we're, what we're going to be doing is opening up the posterior chamber or the vitreous chamber rather. And as we cut all along the outside of the eye, What do you see? So if you look in here, this jelly-like fluid, this is the vitreous humor. So this vitreous humor, this is the really thick stuff, the jelly-like stuff. And you can see that it's all throughout, like the inside of the eye, extending to where you get to the lens. So all of this is the vitreous humor inside of the vitreous chamber. Now what we're going to do is kind of scoop this out a little bit so that we can see everything that's underneath it. But remember that typically you would not, or you would have this in your eye helping to give your eye shape, but also this is gonna be helping with maintaining the shape of the eye, or sorry, maintaining the shape of the eye, but also supporting the eye as well. Now all throughout the posterior side of the eye, you can see that you have this light colored layer. So we saw the in outside, which was the sclera, the deepest layer, this would be the retina. So the retina is this thin, like, thin, deep layer of the eye. But if you lift this up, you can see one more layer that's in between the sclera and the retina. This kind of like, well, in this case, shiny, but also you can see these dark portions as well. This is the highly pigmented, highly vascular choroid. So this is the intermediate middle layer, the vascular tunic, this is the choroid. So in us and humans, this would be like relatively dark throughout the eye, but in other animals, you sometimes have this lighter colored layer. This structure, we don't necessarily need to know, but this is the tapetum lucidum. This is what gives some animals like reflection or like a very bright reflection when you like shine a light into their eye. Now, one thing that you can see here is that as I lift up the retina, or if I kind of dangle it down like this, you can see that it's all converging on one spot. So what that spot is, is like where all of the axons of all of the like ganglion cells coming from the photoreceptors converge, and then they form the optic nerve in the back. So this spot where all of the axons converge, this is the optic disc, this is where you'd have your blind spot. So instead of having like photoreceptors in this one point, you have the axons, the blood vessels, and other structures running through here because 
our eye is just organized that way. So, retina, choroid, sclera. Now, similar to how we had like the cornea in the front of the eye, when you look at the front of the eye, the choroid has some like specific structures as well. But once again, we kind of have to take out this jelly-like fluid, the vitreous humor. Okay, so it's getting a little bit hard to see everything in here, but if you look closely, as you look at the front of the eye, the dark layer, the vascular tunic, the part of the, or continuous the, with the choroid, it kind of changes a little bit. So if you look in here really closely, you can see that you have these little lines. You have these lines that go like outward and inward like this all throughout radiating, radiating in a circle, radiating out in a circle. That kind of thickened region of the choroid this is called the ciliary body. So the ciliary body is a circular muscle that is going to be able to contract as well as dilate in order to change the shape of this structure, which is the lens. So once again, typically this would be like a transparent structure similar to the choroid, but this structure, this is the lens. So surrounding the lens, you have the ciliary body which is going to allow to change the shape of the lens so you can focus light so you can get a fine focused image. So lens, ciliary body, and you can see it here with all of those lines. All of these lines that are around the lens, that's the ciliary body. Now if we move this and go to the anterior portion of the eye, you can start to see some, more, some additional structures. So this right here, the hole, this is the pupil. And the pupil is going to be formed by this thin, like once again, a circular muscle. This is the iris. So the iris, typically the colored portion of the eye, like this very thin portion right here, this is gonna be surrounding the pupil, forming the pupil, as well as changing the size of the pupil, as in like a bigger or smaller pupil, a constricted or a dilated pupil. Depending on the size of the iris, it is going to allow for more or less light to enter the eye. As in like, if you have less light, if you're in a dark room or if you're in a bright room or you're outside in the sun, you would, you would have a bigger or smaller pupil to accommodate that. So those are the major structures. But one more thing is that if, like an anterior to the lens, like this space, you didn't have like that jelly-like fluid. Instead, you had the aqueous humor inside of the anterior chamber. So anterior chamber and aqueous humor, vitreous chamber and vitreous humor, iris, pupil, ciliary body, lens, sclera, choroid, retina with optic disc. All right, so those are the structures of the eye. Make sure that you continue studying. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck. I'll see you all next time.